By popular demand, we are going to be looking at the realistic boiling water reactor in Roblox. This one's called How to Start Unit 2. This video is by Norbert099. Before we check it out, in case you don't know me, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response, I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Rocket intro. <laughs> Some kind of sandwich, man. <laughs> this is really cool. I like all the steps, everything marked. Control room unit two, all right. This already looks pretty cool. <laughs> kind of like how I would imagine if you put a simulator into Roblox. <laughs> it even has a little procedure checklist uh, saying the guide won't work here. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's always good to see if, like a training instructor just show up. Hey, just do what I do, because it's very important that in actually operating a nuclear power plant, you use a procedure. Procedures in hand, directed by the senior reactor operator to the, or control room supervisor to the reactor operators. But it's a good show of operator knowledge to just use the, in the simulator, do it without a procedure, see what you know. It's a great learning opportunity so you can have people trained and actually learn so you don't cookbook procedures as they say, just following a procedure without actually realizing what the steps are really doing to the plan. It's a good way to train. So right now he's over in the secondary or non-nuclear part of the plant, it looks like. By the way, the uh, type of reactor that I was licensed on as a licensed senior reactor operator is a pressurized water reactor. So this is going to be a little different, but a lot of things are the same, like the secondary plant. He's uh, just starting up all those systems, which is cool to see that they put that in there. Because a lot of people, you would think, just put the reactor part for like like a research reactor for instance but no this was, looks looks to be a full boiling water reactor so one thing about at least what i'm used to as far as these indicating lights red is actually in service and green is out of service in the case of turning on a pump red would be on and green would be off or a valve red would be open and green would be closed from what i've heard it's actually backwards in the navy so not sure what rules we're using in this <laughs> in this mod but you'd think he'd be turning everything on let's see if these dials do anything so that was all so all those systems right there were Secondary, so feed water heaters that preheat the water before it goes into the reactor vessel, in this case for a uh, boiling water reactor, the, uh, the feed water. It's preheated to uh, improve uh, thermodynamic efficiency. Condenser is kept out of vacuum again to improve thermodynamic efficiency. All right, here we got reactor, steam, and turbine control. So steam is actually a direct indicator of reactor power. More steam, more reactor power. Because that's ultimately what the reactor does, is it's a boiler. It makes steam, and the steam turns a turbine to make electricity. And he's even got a little schematic of the electrical plant. I like it. Um, this is a good bit smaller than a real control room or a real control room simulator even. Simulators are pretty realistic. They're supposed to be in an exact replica, a real control room. Though, there are still a few discrepancies because the simulator is just a big video game. So it has things like lag that you need to account for. So things happen in the real unit faster than they do in the simulator. It's really cool. All the labels are very clearly marked. I love it. Really, everything you see over here is no different than any other um, steam cycle plant. So here's the reactor control panel. See, INF, infinity. Uh, so that's the period meter. What that does is it calculates how much the reactor power goes up by a factor of E, where E is that 
number that's 2.7 and some change. Familiar with the concept? Don't never use that at the nuclear plant that I worked at. We use something called a uh, startup rate where it was measured in decades per minute, which is a little bit easier for me to visualize. So one decade per minute means power levels going up by a factor of 10 every minute. Whereas period that it tends a bit easier to work with than 2.7. And here it says reactor period is infinity. So we're at steady state shutdown is what that was what that meter is telling us right now. Keep your eyes on water temp, the power range thingy. <laughs> yeah, temperature is a critical parameter and power range. So what that is, is it's an indication of reactor power. It's a uh, nuclear instrumentation. There are various ranges. Um, power range, you're not really in the power range is typically, I uh, can't quite see it from this angle yet, between like one and 100% power. But when you're shut down, you're in the source range where the units are just counts. And then you have the intermediate range, which is in amps. And every nuclear power plant has like conversion charts of where everything lands up between the source range, intermediate range, and power range. So you know which meter you're looking at. You also verify meter overlap when you cross between source and intermediate and intermediate to power range. Some nuclear plants also have extended range, which tell you the full band of source all the way up to power, but those are typically less accurate than the individual ranges. But it's good to do a uh, channel check just so you can validate what you're looking at. <laughs> I like that. Also look at reactor pressure at some point. Key critical parameters of what you should be looking at when you're either changing temperature of the reactor coolant system or just changing power. And So we're moving rods, so you see the change in reactor period. Uh, that's in seconds, so 14.86 seconds. The uh, reactor power will increase by a factor of 2.7. That's just that's just a bit of an awkward unit. <laughs> People swear by it. I'm I'm used to seeing that more in research reactors, though. But like I said, was never licensed at a boiler. So, uh, sometimes they have both both reactor period and startup rate. Here we go. So intermediate power range it says on the same dial. Interesting. Zero half full. <laughs> That's a pretty funny gauge. Usually I'm used to seeing uh, power range expressed as a percentage. Looks like he's selecting and withdrawing individual rods based on that, based on their relative position. That little thing that looks like a uh, checkers or go is where each of the individual fuel assemblies are located. This is a pretty small reactor, judging by the looks of it. A lot of times they are set to, at least the reactor I'm used to, they are set to withdraw and have bank overlap. So each of these positions that you see on that board come from their own bank of control rods. And sometimes you, you withdraw from more at the same time and from more than one at the same time. And the reason for that is to uh, minimize power peaking, where reactor power is higher in some parts of the core versus other parts of the core. There are other measurements of that for axial and radial flux that talk basically just talk about axial being where it is from the bottom of the core to the top, and radial if it's on one side of the checkerboard versus the other side of the checkerboard. All key parameters, and this would be briefed. You typically wouldn't be doing this by yourself. You'd have some um, reactor engineers in there with the reactor operator that are monitoring and validating all these parameters. These have all been calculated very detailed ahead of time, and they're calling out, they're making sure that their in a, their calculations have been are being validated by the uh, reactor operator. It's a very involved process, but I like I really like seeing this in a game. It's cool that it's inspiring people to um, be more into nuclear stuff, and I'm really glad somebody made something like this. 
can't quite read. I can't quite read what that red light says. I don't know if it's some uh, insertion limit alarm, like you can only withdraw certain things. There are certain limits in in place based on how quickly you can move the rods. I just can't quite tell what that says. I can see where it says withdraw and insert, but that that font over the red. <laughs> And it says group block. I think maybe that's something about, okay, making sure you can't withdraw certain groups each. So they're using the term group as opposed to bank. That's that's fine. I've heard it that way too. And and that's and, that, and the reason why that's in place is what I talked about earlier. So you don't have power peaks in certain parts of the core and power valleys where certain parts of the core aren't producing power. It's all about even heating. So you can see on this meter, he's past the halfway mark and moving up to full. Not sure if that's supposed to be full, full power because it just says intermediate and power range, but I don't see like a higher power range or what have you on another meter. So that may be its maximum power output. He hasn't done anything to the turbine yet. Usually you would sync the reactor to the grid at, or, or sync the turbine to the grid at relatively low, about 15 to 20% reactor power, but he's pretty high, so right now he's burning a bunch of fuel and not making any money. <laughs> oh, here we go, okay. Intermediate range, there's a power selector he pulls, and then I saw the needle go back down. Okay, so now we're in range seven. I'm not sure what that means exactly, but remember how I talked about different ranges, source, intermediate, and power? This is evidently the equivalent of that in this mod. That's cool. Love the Canadian flag. Shame this isn't a can-do. Can-do reactors are pretty cool, too. Got some alarms there. Deaerator, temperature, and pressure low. Probably because you haven't started up the secondary plant just yet. <laughs> so what I'm used to seeing is green on, again, green on the left and red on the right. So maybe green is on and red is off in this particular mod, unless it's backwards. I've never been in a Canadian control room, so I can't, I can't say for certain about that. So to go, okay. Oh, recirculating pumps. Okay, so the recirculation pumps or the react or the reactor coolant pumps is another way of of calling those. Though for boiling water reactors, they are indeed called recirculation pumps, but those aren't mixing. Those aren't on. Generally, you want those on before you start up a reactor. <laughs> Makes it a lot easier to control temperature because you're because you're mixing everything. Though certain types of reactors can run completely on natural circulation, at least at up to a certain power level. At the plant I worked at, you could conceivably operate at low power without all four reactor coolant pumps running. This was a Westinghouse four loop design, so you had four reactor coolant pumps, but nobody ever did that per procedure. It's, it's just harder to control. <laughs> So it looks like we're relatively... Power's still going up because he's still showing a number that's not infinity for reactor period. Okay, he put the reactor control rods in run. <laughs> not sure what that means, but okay. <laughs> okay, and see at the top. Okay, APRM in percentage. All right, so we're sitting at 7.8% right now. I rescind my earlier comment about not having the secondary plant online. I just not used to that particular type of uh, indication in a pressurized water reactor that's different. Interesting, the turbine was not sitting on the turning gear. You just turned the turning gear on. Okay. The main purpose of a turning gear, so just think of the turbine as it's a big piece of metal with a bunch of sensitive blades in there that bring the steam through and spins ultimately used to create power. When you have a big piece of metal there that's hot and isn't spinning, generally a good idea to have it on a turning gear because you don't want any bits of the metal to be warmed. Now, if you're warmed up and spinning because the reactor's online and, si and spinning the turbine, then yeah, that'll give it the motive force that it needs. But here he just turned it on. I was, if anything, I would think he would have he would have been closer to turning it back off. It's 
So we just hit a speed control button. He also just jumped on top of the control panel. That's that's always fun. They don't let you do that in a real nuclear power plant, though. <laughs> looks like uh, speed control. Looks like we're going to start accelerating it and spinning it up, which, again, you would need to be on the gear. Some kind of imbalance there flashing. You should probably look into that. That is a fast-moving sync scope. <laughs> Usually you turn your synchroscope off while you're uh, raising speed, just so it's not being spastic like that. <laughs> there you go. So we can read the, uh, so we can read the speed. Okay, so looks like, based on the red line there, the target speed is 3600 RPM. That's, that's pretty quick. Plant I worked at, it was a mere 1800 RPM, but it was probably a much larger turbine. But 3600, that's not unheard of. Getting on up there. Everything is super time compressed for the purpose of the game. There's like a whole guidebook to how fast you can roll up your turbine, how fast you can ramp up the reactor power, but that would make a very fun game because it's like, okay, arrive at this turbine speed. Wait 10 minutes. Arrive at another one. Wait another 10 minutes. Once you get to 50% reactor power, you can, going up to 100 takes 3% per hour. I appreciate the use of time compression for, for the purpose of a video game. Going to correct that rods imbalance there, or is it fine? Also, there's no acknowledge and reset button buttons I can see on these control panels, so that alarm condition could possibly be cleared. You just need to hit a button, or maybe it's set up the way that it's only going to be flashing when it's in. Usually, an alarm comes in, it's flashing. You press the silence one to, sh to uh, shut it up, because it will keep blaring until you do that. Then you hit the acknowledge button, and you'll see if it's locked in, if the condition's still met, or it'll clear and it'll flash slowly and then you can hit a reset button for it to go away. But I can see why I wouldn't put that in a game. Closing it on 3600 now. Lovely. Sync scope slowing down, which means we're getting closer to matching the grid frequency. I've even got a meter for turbine vibration. It doesn't take much vibration to cause an alarm for something as big as the main turbine of a nuclear power plant. As little as a plus or minus 20 to 40 mils, mil being a thousandth of an inch movement, that would feel like an earthquake <laughs> on top of the uh, turbine deck. So it's a sensitive instrument as it should be because you need to protect the turbine and protect the reactor. Sync scope is slowing down. You want it to go clockwise. You want it to go, as they say, slow in the fast direction. Usually a synchroscope has arrows, like the arrow pointing left would say slow and pointing right would say fast. You close the uh, main generator output breaker and connecting it to the grid, slow in the fast direction, so it picks up a li right as that needle crosses the top. You pick up a little bit of load, and then uh, and then you typically keep going. You keep raising reactor power and uh, to uh, continue to bring the unit online. The idea with going the other direction is you don't want you could cause yourself a steam transient. You heard the term water hammer or steam hander just for being out of sync with the grid. That's basically being in the wrong frequency. Um, usually sixty hertz, at least. In, at least in the US, it's always 60 hertz. And it doesn't take much to be off. Like 59 hertz, you're way too slow. 61 hertz, you're way too fast. And we're synced, even though you went the other way. <laughs> uh, no, but hey, looks like they picked up 46 megawatts from the grid. All right. Maybe the sync scope's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that says synchronize, all right, um, I'm used to that being called the main generator output breaker. Usually, um, when I saw it earlier, I thought that just meant it turned your sync scope on. But yeah, that's the main generator output breaker. So hey, we are now making money. 
Um, 47 megawatts on the grid. Looks like reactor power is stable. <laughs> Why isn't there a button for 100%? Does this thing only go up to 80? We'll see. Yeah, so what do we got? Okay, looking at looking at the electrical plant taking 30 sending 31 megawatts and we got 13 megawatts of house loads. Big things would be like the recirculation pumps. Those are really big motors. They're on the order of megawatts apiece. And we're just steaming and dreaming as they say, moving reactor power right along. He just turned on all the pump, or I guess he's now switched it to being powered from the generator as opposed to the um, startup transformer, as we say. First off, those circles is a bit of an interesting unit for, a tra for showing a transformer, but that would be known as the auxiliary transformer that can power the house loads from the power that you're making from the plant, and the... Startup transformer is typically called the standby transformer, and it can be, it's actually supplied from offsite power from the grid. So it looks like we just transferred, we just rolled buses from the startup transformer to the auxiliary transformer. This is a bit, you have a bit more options where I'm used to because it was a two unit site in that. You can cross power from each unit. So you have one unit coming up from an outage. You can have the other unit carry some of its loads from its from its auxiliary transformer or its standby transformer. Usually it's its standby transformer. You don't wanna you typically don't wanna have one reactor carrying the auxiliary loads of another reactor. But okay. Looks like we are Getting, th getting the electrical plant in its normal configuration. It's weird because I got it so ingrained in my head, meaning that the green lights on is more of an abnormal configuration and the red lights on is more of a normal configuration. One thing that happens when you reach certain power plateaus is a flux map is conducted to again check, which just checks to see if the, the axial and rate and radial fluxes talked about earlier are still looking good as we raise in power. That might correct that control rod mismatch alarm that he's got in there if we can we can find out what the issue is, but <laughs> can't tell if that alarm's still locked in or clear. Here we are zoomed up on okay, individual uh, rods position. And when it says individual rods, there's actually a cluster of rods. So each of these squares is a fuel assembly. And there are several individual actual rods, but for the purpose of a control room, one rod means the entire like spider-like assembly of rods with all of its sub-rodlets in each fuel assembly. Now he's just sitting at his unit supervisor desk. Okay, I just noticed it does say, uh, since this is unit two, I wonder if there's any cross-coordination between unit one at all. Interesting, just now putting the deaerator in service at 30% power. That's usually something that I'm used to seeing in the secondary plant as long as you got water flowing through there. Because really all the deaerator is for is water chemistry control. And if you got water and steam flowing through there, you're going to want that at service. Usually you have it in service. There, there are Now granted, there are lower power... Uh, flow pass because you're moving less water and steam when you're lower in reactor power so maybe there's a different valve that you place in service for this reactor type once you get up to 30 to 40 percent that's not uncommon but yeah i could tell it's it had to have been out of service because the aerator temperature and pressure are so low so you the, the pressure and temperature would have been would have been normal and i just see one inlet and outlet valve that's that's a bit weird <laughs> there we go coming up to temperature and pressure And it looks like those particular controllers control demand because he didn't just close the valve 
showing the inlet valve is at about 60% and outlet at about between 60 and 70. That's normal-ish to not have your valves completely open because they're going to modulate in order to maintain uh, DR8 or pressure. <laughs> Never seen anyone start up a reactor while looking like that. That's, uh, that's kind of awesome. I guess now he's doing a victory and then he just leaves. Yes, okay, so yeah, that makes sense. Steam being different, different uh, cooling towers for unit two versus unit one. Makes perfect sense. Typically you don't abandon your control room after while you're uh, increasing reactor power. Well, you got it up to 40% and I think they just wanted to show uh, placing all of the uh, systems in service. Cause you would go all the way up to 100, but there probably wouldn't be that much of an exciting thing from a gameplay perspective at that point, so I can kind of understand why he stopped the video there. That was really cool, so I'm sure you're probably wondering how realistic do I think it is, and I actually think it's pretty good for a video game. A few idiosyncrasies, but I'll admit that I don't, I don't know boiling water reactors nearly as much as I know pressurized water reactors, but a lot of that can be justified by at least making the game accessible fun to play and showing the more fun parts of operating a nuclear reactor than all of the hurry up and wait moments that you would have during an outage. I really liked it. Thanks again for the recommendation. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.